What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at how the class of Real Madrid beat Liverpool in their first leg of the Champions League knockout round. Now before we get into the tactics behind the match, check out the Once Video Analyzer. It's the program I'm using to make this video. There's a link in the description below. Check out both my books and my new tactics course. All that in the description below. And let's get right into the tactics behind the match. So first we're going to talk about Liverpool in possession. They got off to a very good start throughout the match. And this was solely because of the occupation they were able to create between the lines and the pressure they were able to establish on Real Madrid high up the field. So with their back four with Trent Alexander-Arnold coming deeper in the first half, he was very good at finding players between the lines. And the role of Fabinho with his central midfield partnerships between Jordan Henderson allowed him to have more freedom to go higher up the field being alongside two other players who could play in this holding midfield role caused some problems for Real Madrid and having them get caught out into high positions leaving space between the lines. So here we have our asymmetry in our midfield with Cody Gakpo dropping between the lines overloading the space between the lines in Real Madrid's defensive setup. So with this fluidity from Liverpool to be able to establish a presence in the half space between the lines against the Real Madrid mid block, especially when they go to a 4 5 1, drop their wingers and have a very centrally compact team with three central midfielders blocking the half space. It's very hard to break them down, but Liverpool was able to do this in the first half, especially in the first 20 minutes, where they especially gained advantages as when they were able to have players like Modric, Camavinga, and Valverde all jump towards the moving Liverpool shape. This would allow them to create superiority between the lines because of their overloading of the half space. As we see here, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Jordan Henderson, and Fabinho all positioned in the half space, slightly diagonally oriented from one another, creating slight diagonal passing options and the third line passing option into Fabinho where they were able to break the Real Madrid mid block. And with Cody Gakpo dropping between the lines having the player of Darwin Nunez coming off the left running in behind pinning defenders to create these free players between the lines for Liverpool. Now in the second half they had a much better defensive approach. They sat a little bit deeper, Real Madrid, and really contained Liverpool's attacking offensive organization really, really well. They were able to do this by increasing their compactness, by sitting deeper, and dropping their wingers a little bit deeper as well, sometimes even creating a back five, but their three central midfielders played a little bit more flat, controlling the space between the lines and the half space. So this increase in compactness made it very hard for Liverpool to break down. And we'll look at the defensive shape and the space between the lines as I highlight it here and how little space Liverpool actually had to work with. Now they have Trent Alexander-Arnold and Cody Gakpo playing between the lines in the low block, but the space that Real Madrid conceded was the space in front of their low block. And this space is very hard to use and to draw out the Real Madrid players, especially when they have a midfield five or a back five and a midfield four because of these three central players using their cover shadows to block dangerous runs of the Liverpool players. And the individual quality of the back four in these individual duels made it even that much harder. But again, we see the fluidity from Liverpool in their offensive phase that worked so well in the first half, but not quite against this deeper low block from Real Madrid. So we have Trent Alexander-Arnold, Fabinho, and Jordan Henderson all on this right side, overloading the right side again. Mo Salah creating width, trying to get in 1v1 situations, but with adequate cover from Real Madrid, often led to circulation at best for Liverpool. And this, these overloads against a compact team didn't work quite as well, and they really struggled to create dangerous opportunities later on in the match. Now for Real Madrid, in possession of the ball, their fluidity in midfield, and when they build out of the back and create chances higher up the field, is all possible because of the quality of their individual players. So here we have Rodrigo coming between the lines, who's opposite of his partner Vinicius on the left wing. The right winger inverts allowing the right fullback to go higher up. Vinicius Jr. looks to create 1v1 situations with Trent Alexander-Arnold and cutting in on his right foot often partnering with Benzema to create combination play from this left side going in and going very goal oriented. And we have 
also the fluidity of the Real Madrid players to create situations where they go from a midfield four, midfield three, and a midfield box. So they can switch between these three shapes and it can be very fluid, making it very hard to, to defend. Luka Modric primarily playing on the left side. In this situation, we have Valverde overloading the space with Modric usually playing on the right-hand side, creating an interesting dynamic between, between him and Rodrigo. But now we're seeing Liverpool sit a little bit deeper after the first 30 minutes or so, or really into the second half when they lost control of the game through some decisions and they couldn't get close to the Real Madrid players anymore. They sat deeper in a 4-5-1, trying to limit the space between the lines like Real Madrid did to them. But the fluidity of these players were able to draw out Liverpool and especially in transition, Real Madrid really punished Liverpool that ultimately saw the game get away from them. So now when Real Madrid had control of the game, had the lead, they looked to sure up things in possession. They narrowed their back four, went with a more natural midfield three, had their wingers stay a bit wider and created space and really tried to stretch the Liverpool team. So with this asymmetric Real Madrid shape in midfield, we have a midfield three, Valverde being able to go higher between the lines and come deeper. Modric playing a free role, now moving between the lines and creating a lot of problems for Liverpool. Now Real Madrid narrow their back four to control Liverpool's transition and not allow them to get back into the game. This was probably the main reason for doing so, but it also created a lot of dynamics going forward that Liverpool struggled to deal with. Just by doing so, they were able to find diagonal passes into forward positions much easier and especially in wide areas, were able to create 1v1 situations with Modric going higher, pinning the fullback and potentially creating a 2 versus one Because of the spatial orientation of the Liverpool players, it allowed Modric to go higher and create these 2v1s and it really attacked the Liverpool back line. Then with the Liverpool defensive mistakes, with players jumping when they shouldn't and jumping late, like we see here, the midfielders just getting caught out and the players not adequately covering, creates an opportunity for Real Madrid to get 2v1s and get numbers into dangerous positions unaccounted for. And this is where we're going to wrap up the analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.